Well, hello everybody and welcome to this Friday edition of Lunch Break Live. Real talk about obesity, food addiction, recovery, and what's really eating you. I am Carrie De La Cruz and today I'm going to take on a nice light topic transfer addiction after weight loss surgery. But before I get too much farther, I'm gonna check and make sure you guys can actually hear me. So, um, looks like a few of you guys are here. Can you hear me? I see hearts floating by. This time I'm paying attention. All right, does that mean you can hear me? I'm gonna give it a minute, because there's there seems to be a little lag, by the way. I mean, I know you guys leave comments, and it's really weird, they don't show up um, right away and then I'll go back after the fact and I'll see him and I'll be like, huh, how come I didn't see that one at the time? Okay, great. Lots of thumbs up. Fantastic. And hearts. I see that row of hearts even without my glasses on. All right. Well, I would like to welcome you all in and just check in with you before we get started on this and see how is everybody doing? Um, how is life going for you. I'm not going to say how's life treating for you, but how is it going for you? How are you, have you begun changing the way in which you are dealing with life um, as it happens? Are you finding that joining me on these lunch break lives, whether you're joining me live or whether you're joining on demand after the fact, are you finding that the tools that you're gaining from joining me as I talk about the things that rattle around in my pea brain are actually changing or improving the way in which you're living your life. I hope so, because that is exactly why I'm doing this. I'm just gonna get, yes, I got a resounding yes from Mama, and um, I'm just gonna take that as a yes all around. I hope so. Um, so, uh, when I first posted this morning, I said that today was gonna be a Q&A day. Hey, Marlene, I haven't seen you in a while. Um, uh, a Q&A day, uh, which is, you know, your input, my output, and you guys were pretty silent. Maybe you didn't see my post, but I always like to have a little preparation time before a show, so what I did is I reached back into the vault from last week, a whole week ago, and I pulled out a question that I wanna say Diana Abercrombie from New Zealand had asked me, and she said, is, you know, how prevalent, I believe is the way she kind of put it, how prevalent is transfer addiction after weight loss surgery? And I, you know, didn't really want to take it on as part of a bunch of other questions because it's kind of a weighty subject. And I decided, hey, maybe today is a good day for that. So I'm going to give it my very best shot. And I'm going to say that this is a pretty common question. You know, and, and maybe you guys have heard it or even asked it yourselves, but the interesting thing is it seems to be a more common question after people have weight loss surgery. They don't really ask it before they have surgery. Why? I can only um, posit, I can only kind of guess that maybe it's because before surgery, they don't believe in addiction, they don't believe in food addiction, like you can't be addicted to food, or they don't think they have a problem with food that won't be solved with weight loss surgery. In other words, once they're able to, able to eat less of it, it won't be a problem anymore. That's kind of what I think, why it is that people tend to ask this question after um, they have surgery and not before. That is not to say that people don't ask it before, but by and large, um, the majority of people ask the question after the fact. Why? Because it rears its ugly head in, in our lives. And all of a sudden we realize that we had a much bigger problem than we thought and that surgery didn't solve it. So um, now, where do I begin? First of all, I do have a disclaimer. I am putting a disclaimer out there big time. Why? Because I am not a certified addiction anything. Not a, a therapist or a counselor. I'm not a psychologist. So whatever I say in my show is my opinion, and it doesn't mean that it's invalid because it is my experience, but what it means is there aren't any letters after my name that say that what I'm gonna talk about is certifiable. Although addiction certainly made me feel certifiable before I chose recovery. So I'm just saying that is kind of my little disclaimer that says, hey, these are my opinions. And so I'm going to encourage you, as ever, to take what fits and leave the rest, okay? So, um, <clears throat> regarding statistics, I think it's really hard, even if I were certified in this stuff, to give you statistics. Why? Because I think it's underreported. I mean, 
Who is really going to raise their hand at a time when they're still struggling with it to say, yeah, I'm a food addict. Who's going to, you know, sign on the dotted line and, and, you know, put that in there in the survey and be counted? You know, a lot of people, a lot of us aren't because it's, it's embarrassing. It's shameful, right? So I think this is underreported anyway. Hi, are you an alcoholic? I sure am. I mean, a lot of people, unless they have faced that fact, are not going to sign up for it. They're not going to raise their hand and say, yeah, that's me. That's what meetings are for, to raise your hand and say, oh, hi, my name is Carrie and I am a compulsive overeater, whatever it is, right? They're not going to typically do it when someone's calling about a survey. So, And they're certainly not going to talk about it with their doctor. Hi, you know what? I think um, I'm a food addict and I want to have weight loss surgery. Really? You think you're going to get approved for that? Probably not. All right, so think about that for just a second. When you talk about statistically speaking, I think I'm not going to talk sp statistics partially because apparently I can't say the word today, but also because I don't have any. I'm just going to tell you my experience, what I hear, what I see, and I have a feeling it's going to be mirror what you've seen and experienced yourselves. At least I hope so. Or I don't hope so. I don't hope this for anyone. I don't wish this on anyone, but the reality is here we are. So let's help each other. All right. So that's my disclaimer. And I'm going to take um, a stab at, first of all, defining transfer addiction as I understand it. Okay. And again, this isn't a textbook. This is just me thinking about it going, how would I define it? I would say that transfer addiction after WLS or weight loss surgery is what happens when you shift or expand your unhealthy relationship with food to unhealthy relationships with things like alcohol, shopping, sex, gambling, or even exercise, okay? So you expand or you um, shift an unhealthy relationship with food to an unhealthy relationship with any or all of those other substances or behaviors, okay? To the exclusion of healthy relationships with yourself and others, okay? So that's, that's my little um, unscientific, non-statistical definition. That's how I'm gonna define transfer addiction as I understand it, all right? Now, why does it become a problem, especially after weight loss surgery? Well, that's kind of the big question, right? That's the $64,000 question. And I think it's because um, obesity, as I, often say is more than just a physical disease, all right? It's a disease of the mind and the heart and the spirit. And the interesting thing is surgery um, attempts to address the physical component, the physical part of the disease of obesity, and it attempts to address the mental component through behavior modification, right? So it has surgery and it says, all right, we're gonna adjust this physiological part of your body and we're going to tell you how to live with your new body by modifying your behaviors. So structurally speaking, you're going to be able to eat less, right? And so mentally speaking, you will eat less. That's how the disease of obesity hopes to address and treat it through surgery, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's a really, really important part of this battle. Absolutely. A lot of people ask me, could you have done what you did? You know, looking back now, nine years down the road, could you have done what you did without having weight loss surgery? Obviously, I can't answer that question because I was not the person I am now before surgery. And I wasn't the person I am now immediately after surgery. It's been a process and a journey to get to this point. Could I have done it without it? Well, we'd all like to think, yeah, we'd all like to think we don't have to have surgery. But for me, it was a tool that, it was a gift that I was given, and it's a tool that I use every single day. So that's how I answer that question. Could I have done it without it? I don't know. I can't possibly know. But I'm going to do it with it, that's for sure. So, all right, so that's why I think we kind of have a problem with this, because it's only the physiological and mental component that's really, really um, addressed through surgery, all right? To the exclusion of the very, very critical emotional and spiritual component, um, which I think, I'm gonna argue is more important as people. We, as human beings, we are much more the um, um, sum total of our emotional and spiritual selves. And I think that gets manifest in our physical, um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? 
our exterior, our physicality, and it also is manifest in our mental, our mentality. So our physicality and our mentality. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm going to say unfortunately, what doctors see um, as the problem, which is a number, a higher number on the scale when you're dealing with obesity, is really just a manifestation of the unhealthy relationship and um, the emotional and spiritual part, right, that I talked about with food, self, and others, okay? So what the doctors are seeing, what is the thing that is... Um, um, statistical what is the thing that you could chart you know you could do a pie chart sorry about is your weight on the scale as a number and that's how they look at the disease of obesity all right instead of looking at it as an unhealthy relationship with ourselves and with others and with food all right so in other words just taking the food away is certainly not going to take ourselves away we are always in the equation right so just taking the food away doesn't take us away, and it certainly doesn't take other people in our lives away either. And that does not get addressed by surgery. So if we use food to <clears throat> um, prop up or obscure or fake all of our relationships in our lives, and then all of a sudden we don't have that option, what is supposed to just automatically change when we can no longer use food to do what it always did for us? Then what do we do? Well, maybe we're going to turn to other things. We're going to just immediately go to something else because food is not readily available, readily an option, either mentally or, or physically. You know, it's not an option, right? But we got to do something. We got to reach for something because all of the things that we were propping up and faking or obscuring oh, are all still there. They are still the same, if not worse, more raw, okay? So <clears throat> we transfer our, and I'm going to say affections. So you talk about transfer addiction, I'm going to say we transfer affections to other things rather than focusing those affections on the sick relationships that we already have, the sick relationships with ourselves, with food, and with other people, all right? So we transfer those affections, however sick they are, to things like alcohol or shopping or sex or gambling or exercise. We transfer our affections there as if it will fix all of the sick and unhealthy relationships we already have with ourselves, with food, and with others. Got it? That's what I think. That's how I think this manifests itself, and this is how I think it looks. Um, unfortunately, alcohol, shopping, and sex are celebrated in our society as things that grown-ups do. Grown-ups get to do those things, right? When you're 18, you get to do this. When you're 21, you're an adult. You get to do this. You get to drink when you're 21. You get to be an adult when you're 18, which usually implies you get to have sex without getting in trouble, right? Okay, but maybe our lives were put on hold. Maybe we were stunted. Our maturation and our growth was stunted by obesity, right? So we never really grew up. So mentally, emotionally, we are still much younger than our physical self reflects, okay? And so we're really not grown-ups, and yet all of a sudden we're faced with all of these grown-up decisions when we still have a very immature relationship with ourselves, with others, and with food. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? But as a grown-up, we're saying, hey, you can have it now. You can access it. You can drink what you want. Nobody's going to judge you. You know, you can be sexy. You can go shopping because you can fit so many things now. Who's going to judge you? right? You can exercise a lot too. Oh yeah, because that's good for you. All right, but if it's to the exclusion of healthy relationships with yourself and with other people in your life, then no, none of those, however healthy any behavior might be, when it's done to the exclusion of the rest of your life, maybe we're talking about a transfer of affections and a transfer of addictions, okay? All right. How pervasive is the problem? You tell me. Look around. I don't know. Do you see it on other people? Do you see it in yourselves? Unhealthy people have unhealthy relationships with everything. That's just me. That's my opinion. That's what I think, all right? I, I, it's not in a book, um, but that's what I think. I think if you have, if you're an unhealthy person, you're going to have unhealthy relationships with absolutely everything. So does this affect you? Only you know that. I can't tell you. I'm not going to make an addict out of you. Um, only you know the reality of your relationships. Are they healthy? Or are they unhealthy? 
Okay, only you know. Um, let's see. If you are battling obesity, then you have or had a very sick relationship with food, for sure, and probably yourself and probably others. Got it? That's what I'm going to say. And nobody wants to face that truth. I mean, that sucks, right? That just sucks. I do not want to face the fact that I had an unhealthy relationship with myself and other people. Food, okay, that was obvious. That was a gimme. Everybody can kind of see, all right, I you know, weighed 320 pounds. Yeah, that's kind of a big problem. But uh, I don't want to admit that I had a problem with myself or with others. No, that's, that's a little painful. That, that's a, a little bit of truth that maybe I don't want to have, right? And that is why we pick up other substances to dull the pain of that truth to dull the sharpness of that truth because it really kind of hurts, okay? But guess what? That is where transfer addiction, transfer of affections flourishes in, is in the denial of reality, the denial of truth, all right? We go around and we look for things that can help us to not have to face, not have to cope, not have to look at or deal with reality. That's what we're doing to, to numb the pain, all right? Um, let's see. We say, I want to feel better, but I don't. I thought I'd feel better when I lost weight, but I don't. Now what do I do? I don't want to think about it. That's what I do. You know what? I just don't want to think about it. So I think I'll drink. I think I'll shop. I think I'll seek affection wherever I can get it because I never had it before. And then I won't have to think about it, right? And then when I realize that I don't feel better, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to return to my very familiar friend, food. And that's how regain happens. Only now, chances are, you got a problem with food and you got a problem with booze, right? You got a problem with shopping. Boy, you have absolutely compounded your problem now and you went right back to what you always knew. Unless you face that truth head on, you face the fear and you say, this is what I need to face and deal with. What am I gonna do about it? Am I going to eat it away? No, because it's not going to change it. Am I going to spend it away? Am I going to drink it away? Am I going to sex it away? No, because it's not going to change it. It's only going to make it worse. So this is where the grown-up part happens. This is where the grown-up says, hey, it is time for me to institute, to implement some boundaries, some healthy boundaries, some rules of behavior for us, okay? That's where the grown-up really shows up. Not in doing the, quote, grown-up things, no. What happens when you, you know, you, you let a, a little kid, underage kid drink, they drink too much, right? That's what we're doing. We're underage until we're grown up and it's time to start growing up right now. That's what I think. So, um, how can you stop it? It's very important that I leave you with hope and I leave you with some suggestions, some thoughts that we're going to build on. This is not something you solve today. This is not something I answer for you. All right. This is not something that I can do for you or take away from you. This is something I can encourage you to face and work with. And I can absolutely tell you I have done it and I do do it. All right. So you're not alone on this one, but it is time. If you're ready, if you think you're flirting with a transfer of affections and addictions and wow, it's life is a mess. Here's a thought for you. I'm going to I'm going to suggest that you start by assessing your relationship with food. Are you afraid of it? You got to ask yourself that. Do you try to avoid it? Do you drown yourself in, in it? Do you use it when life happens? Do you turn to it, right, to cope? Do you respect it? So you need to assess just as you would a relationship with a, a mate, uh, um, a friend, anything else, you need to assess what is the quality of the relationship you have with food. Because once you figure that out, then you'll figure out what you need to do to have a healthier one, okay? And then it just comes down to, are you going to be a grown-up and actually do it or not? I can't do that for you. There's no easy way, no softer, easier way. You just got to do it. But you got to figure out what you got to do first, right? Okay, so that's the first thing. The next thing is I want you to look at your relationship with you. And I talk a lot about this, all right? So I guess it's kind of the same questions. Are you afraid of you? Do you trust you? That's a biggie. Do you avoid you? Do you try to run away from you, right? La, 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 I'm not listening, I'm not listening to me. Do you run away from you? Um, do you 
run away from you when life happens. Just say, nope, nope, we're not going to do this right now. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to go shopping. That always, retail therapy makes me feel better if I have a new pair of shoes. Okay. Do you abuse yourself like you abuse food? Ouch. That one kind of hurts, huh? Do you respect you? All right. If the goal is to respect you and to respect food, and I think that's going to be a really great foundation for healthy relationships with food and yourself. And guess what? When you have healthy relationships with food and yourself, you can have healthy relationships with others in your life. I mean it. It happens. It's just like a, it's like a byproduct. It's so great. So start with those questions and then honestly listen to the answers. Okay? Fearlessly, courageously listen for the answers. Only you know the truth. I cannot answer those for you. Only you know the truth. Only you have to listen. You don't have to share this list with anybody. It's just between you and you. Okay? Um, I'm not going to make an addict out of you, and you don't have to even call yourself an addict. You don't have to do that in order to get better and choose recovery, all right? All you have to do is look at it and say, I have a problem, and if it's a problem, I'm going to deal with the problem, and I'm going to choose recovery. So, what do you think of that? How's that for Friday light? Wow. That's my uh, take as I look at my watch here and realize that 20 minutes, gone. So I'm going to look real quickly at your comments. I'm going to thank you all for being here all week, always, you know, being so generous with your time. Whenever it is that you share your time with me, whether you're sharing it with me live, whether you're sharing, you know, between bites, uh, whether it's your afternoon, whether it's your morning, your weekend, whether you're watching me on demand, archived, re-watching, I am so grateful. I cannot stress that to you guys enough. Thank you so much for being here. If you find this pro um, program problem program to be worthwhile it is really really valuable to me invaluable really if you share it with others all right it is not that I uh, don't like talking to just you guys because I really do but let's let's expand let's let's cast a bigger net and let's welcome more people into this you know let's not have this recovery be a secret all right let's share it with more people please so please share it if you like what you're hearing and share with me how it is that you're experiencing growth through recovery in your own life. I love that. I get uh, private messages from people all the time telling me the tools that they're using, uh, the areas that they're struggling, and the things that they have picked up and found in these programs that have given them some hope and some help. So please feel free to share with me. It's just between you and me. I'm not going to share it with anybody at all, all right? But it does my heart good. And hey, don't we all like a little bit of validation and acknowledgement that the work we're doing is good? So please do that uh, for me. I'm asking you. All right, guys. So I'm going to scroll through real, real quick like and see how you all are doing. And just thank you again for being here. I'm just really, really enthusiastic. And it's very dry here. My mouth is very dry. <laughs> we're like 3% humidity. Great. So all righty. Hi, Mama and Sherry. You can hear me loud and clear. All righty scrolling 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 I did that on purpose all right well hello Ms. Hammer I love that Ms. Carrie I love it all righty let's see any questions any questions so glad you guys are here I'm so glad that you're forming this community and welcoming each other and that makes me really happy to see it already fits you yeah huh I sometimes it's a little tight it's a little bit snug it fits a little too well huh Sherry that's all right. The good news is you know it fits. It, I really believe that acknowledging it, accepting it, being aware of it is the first step in making that change that we need to do. It gives us the courage to say, yep, I got a problem, but guess what? Carrie's talking about the solution. I can do this thing. So, all righty. It looks like just a lot of high, high, high in. And JC, I see you like my speech. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. I like your pretty face. How's that? I love your little selfies. Affection, yeah, affection. We all, we crave affection, you guys. We, we thrive on, we hunger for affection, but we want healthy affection, healthy attention, right? If we're addicted to any kind of attention, then we'll take whatever attention we can get, whether it's healthy or not. Let's be addicted to a healthy affection, starting with ourselves. You know what? I like me. That's, that was a really big step for me. I didn't like me before, but I like me now. I'm, you know what? I have a little bit of affection for myself. I do. 
So there you go. All righty. Scrolling through. Hi, Lynn. I'm so glad you're here again. Better late than never. Absolutely. Go back and watch the beginning. It's kind of fun. Cleo, hi. And Eric, I'm glad you made it today. And my niece, Judith, all the way from Mexico. She can't really understand me, but I'm so glad she's here. Hi, baby. Um, Mija. Okay. So that's it. Um, thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, Hannah bought me this really cute sweater. It's like really long from the thrift shop. And then this necklace, you know, was given to me. Okay. Um, by my coworker. Oh, wait, it was turned around. Let me look. Okay. Showtime. Okay. And then this top I got in Mexico. So there we go. It was like a little fashion show today. Um, so that's it. I have gone way long. Thank you for being here. I hope you found this to be revealing and enlightening and full of hopeful promise for your own recovery. All right. So I'm going to let you guys go because I got to go eat. So you guys have a beautiful, glorious weekend. And on that note, I'm going to remind you all to have courage, seek peace, embrace joy, and above all, embrace and love that healthy recovery. Remember, you can't stop feeding what's eating you if you don't know what's eating you. I'll see you guys on Monday. Take care. Bye.